Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Anna, AKA NeuroGalMD. I'm a double board certified neurologist and epileptologist, and I created this channel to teach interested folks like you about the most beautiful organ in the body, the brain. Today, I'm going to review a video that popped up randomly in my YouTube feed. This video is apparently incredibly popular. It has 96 million, oh no, a 101 million views at the time I'm filming this video. So I clicked on it out of curiosity the other day. And as I watched it, I thought to myself, there are so many great neurology teaching points in this video. So let's just go through this quick random video together while I provide some fun educational commentary or what I like to call medutainment. All right. She came up to pay for her soda. I was working in the back of the store, rearranging a few things. I came up to the counter to help her, and I talked to her right there, and she answered me, no problem or anything. And I'm a mom, I'm a grandma, I love babies, so I wanted to see if I could get the baby to, to talk to me or smile or anything. And all of a sudden, the girl had a glazed look over her face and I knew something wasn't registering with her. So I grabbed the baby's arm and I was trying to say, do you need help? Do I need to get somebody? What's wrong? And she just was lost in space, her look. So I thought, I gotta take this baby before something happens. And right there, she just, she falls. And I don't even remember. The baby's mother just had a seizure. A seizure is caused by abnormal electrical activity in the brain. The type of seizure that it looks like she had is called a generalized tonic-clonic seizure, or what's historically been known as a grand mal seizure. Generalized tonic-clonic seizures happen when abnormal electrical activity occurs all over the brain simultaneously. Someone experiencing a generalized tonic-clonic seizure will have whole body stiffening followed by rhythmic jerking of the extremities. I can grab the phone, dial 911 while I had the baby in my arms. And when I went around the counter to help the girl then, I gave the customer the baby because I wanted to help the girl that was on the floor. She was having a very bad seizure and was seizing very badly. So I was on the phone with 911 with their dispatch, telling them what she was doing. They were talking to me to try and help her, make sure she was breathing, make sure she was gonna be okay. And they stayed on the phone with me until the paramedics came. And I stayed down by that, that woman until the paramedics came. Notice what happens after the baby's mother falls behind the counter. This is important because it highlights the importance of knowing what to do when you witness someone having a seizure. Obviously, we can't see her after she falls off behind the counter, but uh, the man who comes up to the counter runs away to call for help. Then the clerk runs around the counter to help the mother. We don't see exactly what she's doing, but she's speaking on the phone with a medically trained person who walks her through the steps of seizure first aid. Here are the key points to seizure first aid. Ensure the person is turned on his or her side so they don't choke or aspirate on saliva. Ensure their head is protected, for instance, that it's not banging against the floor or something hard. You can put a, a jacket or a soft blanket underneath their head. It's also important not to put anything in the person's mouth while they're seizing. A popular old wives tale is to place an object like a spoon in the seizing person's mouth to prevent them from swallowing their tongue. A person cannot swallow their tongue, that is a myth. So putting anything in a seizing person's mouth can be dangerous, it can break teeth, it can injure the jaw. It's also important not to hold the body down during the seizure because this can potentially dislocate the person's joints. Stay with the person until the seizure stops and the person can respond appropriately to your questions. Um, yesterday, which would have been Wednesday, to tell me thank you for saving her baby, that she's had seizures all her life, and if I wouldn't have been there, she didn't know what would have happened to her baby. The baby's fine, the mom's fine, and she just kept telling me thank you. So the mother had seizures all her life. This is my last key teaching point. New mothers with seizure disorders have a high risk of experiencing breakthrough seizures after their babies are born. This is due to the sleep deprivation and stress that can come with having a new baby. This decreases the seizure threshold and it makes the brain more susceptible to seizure activity. Because of this risk, it's really important to counsel pregnant women and new mothers with seizure disorders about safety for themselves and their baby once 
once the baby is born. I've encouraged all my pregnant patients with epilepsy or seizure disorders to seek support from family and friends once the baby is born. Ideally, six to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep is important to minimize the risk of breakthrough seizures. It's also important to encourage new moms with epilepsy to engage in safety-oriented behaviors. So this includes changing the baby's diapers and feeding the baby on a surface low to the ground, avoiding bathing the baby alone, avoiding co-sleeping because if the mother has a nocturnal seizure, she could inadvertently smother the baby. The mother can also use a small stroller to move the baby around the house, which will minimize the risk of dropping the baby should a seizure occur. This is NeuroGalMD. I hope you enjoyed this educational video and we will catch you next time.